guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Welcome back, everybody, to Next Week with Jeff Durbin. I'm Jeff Durbin. This is the show with the unpopular opinion. You guys ready for some news? Yeah. Let's do it. Now, a lot has been happening in the news this last week, and here's some of it, guys. Uh, there's been a big celebrity breakup recently involving one of the stars from Jurassic World. Do you guys hear about this? That's right, it was the ancient dinosaur known as Steve Bannon. Uh, he's parted with Donald Trump, guys. <laughs> in fact, actually, everybody's leaving the White House now. I mean, he's almost completely done, uh, alone, actually, Donald Trump. I mean, he doesn't seem to be worried about it, though. And the staff heard Donald Trump whisper to himself, I was in Home Alone too, and I did fine. It'll be fine. <laughs> Hey, uh, the Atlanta Falcons opened a Chick-fil-A at their home stadium. Yes. Chick-fil-A sauce, right? Nothing beats it. And even though, actually, seven out of eight of their home games are on a Sunday. So now, Chick-fil-A is just as open as their receivers were last Super Bowl. That's a joke coming from a guy that didn't understand it, actually. So... Conor McGregor and Floyd Mayweather fight this Saturday. Actually, I am really excited about this. So, CNN, get ready to have your logo plastered on McGregor by Sunday. Think about it? Okay. From this fight alone, McGregor is expected to make $100 million. And Mayweather is expected to make $400 million. I'll do it. I will do it. And meanwhile, the ladies holding up those cards between the rounds, they aren't making anything close to that. Finally, the feminists are right. Women do make millions of dollars less than men. <laughs> Korean company Samsung announced Bigsby is now available in more than 200 countries. And now begins South Korea's plan to make the world miserable without using nukes. <laughs> Samantha Bee's late night show, Full Frontal, has been nominated for seven Emmy Awards. Seven. Congratulations, Samantha Bee, on being a woman. <laughs> That's about it. A new study confirmed that people start to hate their jobs when they turn about 35 which is actually the same age you're allowed to start running for president. Because, hey, why well, have a midlife crisis when you can have an international one? <laughs> All right, guys, we'll be right back. I'm Jeff Durbin. This is next week. Don't forget to like and share the show. We'll see you on the other side. Thank you, guys. Apologia All Access is Apologia Church's opportunity to have a farther reach into the world with our proclamation of the gospel, our defense of the gospel, our engagement of the culture. And I pray, God, today that you would move in a mighty way, Lord God, to open the eyes and hearts of these people and draw them to your Son. So again, it's back to who do we believe, Jesus or Joseph? What it is is this. People who are fans of our ministry, who learn from our materials. They partner with us. They join together with Apologia Church. They donate $7.95 a month. And when they donate, they participate with us in ministry, making all of this possible. The studio, our reach into the world, our evangelism, our special television show, our videos, everything that we do to communicate the gospel around the world. We began to go across the island and we saw the cults everywhere. There's a real opportunity to bring the gospel in a powerful way here. Ultimately, our goal is to create television programming that glorifies Christ in its quality, but can also engage the culture in its conversation. If I'm a Christian, if I believe in my Lord Jesus Christ, it stays with me in all areas of my life. That means if I'm in business, if I'm in politics, it stays with me. I like you a lot. <laughs> With Apologies TV and After Show, we have guests like John Frame, Dr. James White, Ken Ham, and Denny Burke, with more guests added every week. And we discuss relevant news, information, and issues. We cover a wide breadth of topics, everything from abortion to apologetics to cults like Mormonism and Jehovah's Witnesses to biblical theology and reformed theology. 
for new, predestined, justified, glorified links forged by God in this golden chain. So when you sign up for All Access, you get the weekly television show, the after show, you get Apologia Academy and all the advanced theological training, and you make all the additional content that we put out possible. There is evil and suffering in the world. So what? Nothing is ultimately evil in an atheistic world. So what? So the content we're able to, to put out to reach into the world with the gospel is made possible by you, our All Access partners. It is that special time at Next Week with Jeff Durbin where we talk about our blend of the week for all you coffee lovers. This is Americano Eclipse. It's a temporarily dark blend that you actually have to travel 700 miles to get. Um, and when you do, it's mostly unsatisfying. All right. Hey, let's talk. You guys ready? On to the main topic of tonight. This last week, we've learned something very big since the Charlottesville rally, and that is that Americans are believing lies. I mean, there are small lies, like the new DuckTales series is better than the original. There's that. <laughs> or that by giving money to TBN, you'll get a car. <laughs> or that by giving a car to TBN, you'll get this Jim Baker hat. <laughs> but there are actually bigger lies that we're all believing. Like somehow being anti-Nazi is actually a brave new thing. I want to make it very, very clear that I condemn white supremacists, alt-right assholes, and everything they stand for. <laughs> Wait. The KKK? I'm not a fan. I mean, I thought the US already hated Nazis. World War II and Indiana Jones made that very clear. But people are actually being applauded for saying that they're against Hitler's ideas. I mean, that doesn't make any sense. We all agree that we hate anything that's that bad, right? I mean, we all hate when the Wi-Fi goes out. I mean, sure. I mean, there are those, those few backwoods grandpas who want to send Wi-Fi back to where it came from, but I shouldn't get a gold star for recognizing that Uncle Ed's not right in the head. And with everyone applauding this, Hey, Amy Schumer, now is the perfect time to get your validation from your dad. I mean, look, say you hate Nazis and you will be invited back to Thanksgiving dinner. Now, in the course of hating all Nazis, the US has turned on one man who apparently signifies all that is a Nazi, President Donald J. Trump. The current administration is standing for Nazism, is defending David Duke and his cronies. Now, look, at Apologia Church, we're not pro-Trump. But I do know this, he doesn't stand for Nazis because he's not a socialist. I mean, his platform would never stand for that. Which makes me think, if Nazis are socialists, then who else is a socialist? <laughs> That's right. Now, the left side is upset because Donald Trump didn't do what they wanted. I mean, he spoke out against violence. They said it wasn't good enough. He condemned Nazis and white supremacists. They said he was too late. He said there were good people on both sides. They said there's no way the alt-right had good people. Now, look, I'll take it a step further. In Luke, Jesus said nobody is good except God. So I agree, Trump was lying because neither side had good people in it. <laughs> And so, yes, we hate Nazis. Yes, we hate socialism. And yes, we hate the new DuckTales. <laughs> but we also hate lying, because in Proverbs chapter 6, it says that God hates a lying tongue. And half-truths are lies, too, like the belief that grape juice is actually an appropriate substitute for wine. <laughs> or that grape juice is even grape juice. I mean, you look on the back and it's only 10% juice. The world is lying to you people and God hates it. The media made it seem like President Trump was supposed to condemn Nazis after that weekend, as if all presidents are supposed to do that. But in 2015, when nine black church members were gunned down in the safety of their own church by a white supremacist, President Obama didn't make it about condemnation of white supremacy. 
All he did was turn it into an anti-gun speech. We don't have all the facts, but we do know that once again, innocent people were killed in part because someone who wanted to inflict harm had no trouble getting their hands on a gun. I mean, what was Trump supposed to do? Make an anti-tiki torch speech? <laughs> I mean, then the left got even more upset when he, when he said that there was violence on both sides. Yeah, I don't feel like getting pepper sprayed and tased or beaten by the Antifa and the Black Lives Matter people. Witnesses tell NBC News there were people on both sides who seemed ready for a fight. And some counter protesters were armed with clubs, some with pepper spray. I mean, the media actually lies, making it seem like anti protesters weren't violent protesters. Among the anti protesters was a group known as Antifa, which not everybody knows was actually there. And mainly because I think the KKK was just looking around for someone's liberal aunt from Boston. Antifa? <laughs> Antifa? What are you doing here? Now look, you will notice that there were no racists in that scene. Just a bank being broken into and people kicking a trash can. But wait, hold on, wait a second. Oscar the Grouch lives in a trash can. Hold on, does Antifa hate Sesame Street? Look here Antifa, you better condemn Sesame Street haters right now or at least in, the less, two, in, in, the, in less than two days, otherwise that makes you anti-Muppet. <laughs> Hashtag liberal logic. And so since there's proof that violence was actually on both sides, will that make everything better? You have, uh, you, you had a group on one side that was bad and you had a group on the other side that was also very violent. And nobody wants to say that, but I'll say it right now. <laughs> no, don't say it right now, don't ever. Why not say it? I mean, if there's blame on both sides, point out the truth, right? Can I, can I get an amen, right? I mean, here's the thing. The whole reason I'm bringing this up is definitely not to defend Donald Trump. That's what Twitter's for. I'm pointing this out to show how dangerous lying can be. I mean, a mob of hatred has become a symbol of the right side being completely wrong. For instance, for instance, this past weekend, there was a free speech rally of conservatives and it actually got shut down in Boston by anti-protesters. But the Boston Free Speech folks said that their group actually had nothing to do with white supremacy or the KKK, and they disavowed both of those groups or organizations and also said they had nothing to do with what occurred in Charlottesville. I mean, they're just looking for a group of white people. <laughs> Starbucks, close your doors! <laughs> Golf courses, haunted houses, magic shows, mayonnaise factories. <laughs> Defend yourselves! I mean, everybody at the White House, leave while you can. Wait, hold on, they already did. I mean, this rally wasn't even about white supremacy. This is about free speech. And there were only about two dozen conservatives at the free speech rally. That's like 24 of the most docile people you can meet. Uh, witnesses tell me they were actually brought out by Boston police and, and, and assisted in getting through the huge counter protests that had come here today, actually put in wagons and safely taken away through the streets of Boston as counter protesters gathered around. The anti protesters were so threatening that these conservatives had to ride on a wagon. <laughs> I mean, the left side just turned this rally into a parade. Oh, we're gonna make them angry. Make them give us candy, right? I mean, you guys are always looking for a free handout. And this is actually dangerous. I mean, the secular side is trying to convince you that free speech is okay, just so long as it fits their bill. The Antifa now joins next week's bully watch list. Now, just to make sure that no one lies about what I'm saying, let me be absolutely clear. I'm not racist, Jesus wasn't racist, and I condemn completely the hateful acts of white supremacists. Where's my applause, guys? Come on, give it to me. Oh, <laughs> this is now a real nighttime talk show, okay. Now, look, I also don't agree with the secular agenda because it's unbiblical, but let, that does not make me a hater. That makes me a Bible reader. And 
As we have all learned from LeVar Burton, reading can do amazing things for you. <laughs> Take a look, it's in the good book, Reading Rainbow. <laughs> I mean, the rainbow's a promise from God, which I know because I read it. Don't believe the lies. Now listen, Exodus 20, verse 16 says, you shall not give false witness against your neighbor. And I'm saying, be careful what labels you give people. Christians and conservatives are not the same as racists. If we were all pizza, the KKK and Nazis would be supreme pizza or pizza supremus, if you will, okay? <laughs> now, I'm pepperoni, because I'm spicy. <laughs> and most Christians, whether they like it or not, they're just cheesy, <laughs> right? And the left side, socialists, are technically a supreme pizza, but it's more like the vegan kind. <laughs> so, now you see how we get lied to by the media and the secular agenda. But unfortunately, it doesn't end there. We can also be lied about. For instance, this past Sunday, a pastor named Stephen Anderson from Faithful Word Baptist Church lied about me. Well, there's a guy in our town here, a false prophet. His name is, uh, I believe his name is Jeff Durbin. And he pastored a church called the Apologia Church. I call it the Apostasia Church. Okay, first off, he was wrong about everything he just said. <laughs> Secondly, I don't remember the, the season of Lost where Jack left the island and became an angry preacher. <laughs> and third, third point, apostasia is actually this. <laughs> Give it a moment. <laughs> He's got this TV show now where he says, yeah, we're gonna push the envelope, we're gonna be edgy. He makes jokes about sodomy. I'm talking about vile, disgusting, graphic jokes where he thinks that homosexuality is funny. It's clear he didn't actually watch it. Uh, it was not a graphic joke about sodomy. It was a monologue joke in which I said, unlike today's secular society, when I was a kid, we were taught not to rear end people. Now being graphic about sodomy actually looks like this. See, I got the bolt right here, represent the male, right? We got the nut right here, represent the female, all right? This is what normal people do, okay? This is what, now let me show you what insanity says to do. Now, we said the words rear end, but this man is literally screwing things together on the stage. Well, there's a guy in our town here, a false prophet. His name is, uh, I believe his name is Jeff Durbin. And this pervert, this dog, gets up to Durbin. I think his name Jeff Durbin. He thinks my name is Jeff Durbin? <laughs> our wives were in the same organic food co-op together. I mean, I've been to his house at least half a dozen times. <laughs> Steven, I know what your ottoman looks like. Are you lying or is there something wrong with your memory? I mean, I hope not. Otherwise, I'm trapped in an Adam Sandler reboot, reboot 51st Debates. He gets up and has this show where he makes a mock at sin. The Bible says fools make a mock at sin. Okay, I'll bite. Was Elijah mocking sinners when he asked if their God was on the toilet? Was Paul mocking sinners when he told the Galatian heretics to go ahead and castrate themselves? Or was God mocking sinners when he said in Proverbs chapter 3 that God mocks sinners? <laughs> the problem is, a lot of you think that I'm not supposed to be sitting here doing a late night talk show because of the standard that man and Caleb put in place. And by that I mainly mean Caleb, right? But it's unbiblical it's an unbiblical standard that gives Christians the ability to keep quiet when they ought to be speaking out. Amen. But if Stephen feels so strongly about not mocking sin, we can all at least expect him to never do it. Why do you mock a guy in a wheelchair? I mean, come on, you wouldn't mock a guy in glasses, would you? <laughs> well, let me tell you something. The reason I mock, the, the Lord's going to mock. Amen. He said, I'll mock when your fear cometh. The Lord shall laugh. This guy contradicts himself constantly. 
We didn't even have to look far to find these clips, guys. I mean, it's so foolish. How is he not on Trump's cabinet? And while I'm thinking about it, he also called me a drunkard. Me, the guy who's spoken in four countries in the last year about addiction. The guy who planted a church called Apologia that started at a rehab clinic. The guy who can't remember the last time he drank alcohol. I mean, this guy didn't even do his research. He just made up lies. Once again, President Trump, he's your soulmate. <laughs> Even mainstream Christianity is condemning Jeff Durbin right now. Even, even the most liberal, watered down news outlets are saying, this guy's going too far. This guy's over the top. This is disgusting. Okay, that's definitely a lie. And none of those quotes are even sourceable. I mean, we wish mainstream media was talking about us like that. <laughs> Anybody but this guy. You know, these bunch of pastors who think they're so stinking cool, dressing like a teenager when they're like 40 years old. Hey, grow up! Amen. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I thought as a child, I understood as a child. When I became a man, I put away childish things. Then why does it look like your church is in a nursery? <laughs> For real, look at the trees in the back. Where's this church at, Narnia? All this guy did was accuse me without facts, without doing any research. And just like all liars, you can catch them with their own words as seen in the previous clips. Also, there's this stuff we didn't know what to do with. Why don't you dress like an adult, you clown? You wouldn't mock a guy in glasses, would ya? I'm sick of it, and I'm not gonna back down. The editors of the NIV pee sitting down. It's because the editors of the New King James, they all pee sitting down. I'm gonna tell you something, I'm not gonna pee sitting down. <laughs> Look, to sum it up, God hates lying. That much is clear in scripture, whether it's from fake news or from fake pastors. And as we close out this segment, uh, we wanted to express to you just how ridiculous Steven Anderson can be in the pulpit. Um, we're called clowns, and so we thought the best thing to do was make this. I got beans, greens, potatoes, tomatoes, lamb, greens, 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 potatoes, tomatoes, you made beans, potatoes, gravy, vegetables, pig, lots of milk. Vegetables, potatoes, tomatoes, lamb, beef. Tell your Calvinist buddy to put that in his stupid pipe and smoke it. Smoke it. Smoke it. Smoke it. To put that in his stupid pipe and smoke it. Now, Mr. Anderson. I know you're watching this because why else would you have talked about me unless you wanted some attention? So, I'll give it to you. Uh, here is what I would suggest. I would love to debate you. Let's plan a debate between Steven Anderson and myself on the subject of who gets the glory for salvation, God or man. Let's do a debate, a public debate. We'll pay for the entire thing, the venue. We will fill it up with people. And let's have a debate over who controls salvation, God or man. You want to do a debate on Calvinism, Mr. Anderson? We're all in. And if you don't respond and don't answer, well, I guess you can just put that in your stupid pipe and smoke it. <laughs> Those are his words. Those are his words. We will be right back, guys, with our special guest right here on next week. Thank you guys for staying with us. Be right back. Much. Welcome back, guys, to next week. Tonight's guest is a comedian and an actor. He's been doing stand-up comedy for decades, and he's in the new movie, Extraordinary. Please welcome Leland Clausen. <laughs> welcome, Leland. Thank you. Thank you. So what's up, Leland? Not much. We needed you in this part here just to sort of break the ice a bit. A little tense mood in here oh, right now. Oh, well, I do need to tell you that I, I can't be here too long. I gotta get going. I'm going to Steve Anderson's church. I got a gig. <laughs> you got a gig over there? You gotta get over there. Doubtful. <laughs> Doubtful. So let's talk. Let's let everyone get to know you. You're starring in a new film coming out September 7th yep. called Extraordinary. And it's about a, an ultra marathon run based on a true story. Okay. 
Um, and he basically, the story is he, he, he pursues this passion, this, this ultra marathon running. Uh, some people that's a passion. <laughs> yeah. To me it was a lot of pain. Yeah. Um, and, and he starts to neglect his, his family. He starts okay. to neglect his, his wife and, and kids and uh, so he has to learn that balance. And uh, yeah. Excellent. I, and so the film right. actually, you star alongside Kirk Cameron. Yes. Which is mandatory for Christian films. It, to be a legal, yeah, be to a be, legal to be part, Christian film. Part of the genre, have, it's got to have Kirk Cameron. Or, right? or one of the Baldwins. Or one of the Baldwins. Well, I think it's the only one, <laughs> Stephen. Uh, <laughs> yes, definitely, Stephen. Just the, yeah. So, um, talk to us about how you got involved in comedy. I mean, you're you're a, you're a Christian. You're involved in uh, stand-up comedy, and it's an interesting field to choose. You know, as a Christian, I think it's amazing and totally necessary. So, talk to us about how you got involved and why. Uh, you know, con I know I don't actually know the moment I decided to become a comedian, but I just always wanted to try it, I guess. And so I started. Uh, I just started uh, getting on stages, clubs and, and bars and, and things. And I, uh, I've always kept it, uh, what I thought would be honoring to God, uh, all the way through. And, and then I just started doing more and more, uh, more and more churches and things like that. And yeah. I don't know. So you're all over YouTube. I'm, I'm pretty down about it all. <laughs> <laughs> if this so, show's about honesty, I gotta be honest with you. <laughs> I'm pretty tired of doing it. <laughs> So uh, how, how does this open up new avenues for you a as a believer to be able to communicate a in a way that's fun and that makes people laugh? And, and how does it open up opportunities for you? I, I mean, I do think that when, when people laugh, uh, it, it does break down the, I mean, you're doing a show that's about, you know, people are laughing, you, you break down barriers. Right. When, when, you, when you laugh together with someone, regardless of what you believe, if you were laughing together about something, uh, it, it breaks down some of those walls and allows you to speak speak some truth. That's right. Unless God is not a fan of fun. And <laughs> well, that's, a, that's a theory. You know, Martin Luther said that if you can't laugh in heaven, I don't want to go there. Oh. Famous reformer. I like that quote. So, um, but you, you've chosen as a, as a Christian to be a part of a, a field of entertainment, right? Yeah. And I think it's spectacular because there's all worldview being driven when it's any stand-up, right? Like, you see stuff yeah, come up yeah, on, yeah. like, Netflix. Yeah. Sorry, Pure Flix. Netflix, like, <laughs> comedy specials, right, stand-up stuff. Yeah. And yeah. it's, you, you, f you kind of flip through them and you're thinking, well, I know I can't watch that, that's M, <laughs> right? right? right, right I'm not right. gonna be able to get through that. And yeah. I've tried a few times to turn something on and go, I get five minutes and I go, I can't watch it because they're propagating, say, an unbiblical worldview mm. or they're just saying things that yeah, yeah. I don't want to let my heart and mind. I, I'm a I'm a definite minority in the comp. Like I'll go to you know Just for Laughs Comedy Festival, biggest comedy festival in, in the world. Uh, sounded like I was bragging, biggest comedy festival in the world. <laughs> so, um, but no, and, and the to be a Christian there is just like what? What is this? Like it's like I thought that died. You know, like right. that whole yeah. movement. It's like no, it's still alive. No, it's, alive. Been, it's been resurrected because yeah. it's Christian. That's right. Um, <laughs> thank you. So thank you. Um, so. Talk, talk about that, because I think that's interesting, is that you have um, a way that you go in comedy that is different than you hear normally in stand-up, right? Mm. Like, it can actually be listened to. Like, a family can get together and hear you, right? Yeah, yeah. But it can actually be good. Well, for sure. And what I mean by that is that some people, I think, don't... <laughs> what don't, do you mean? <laughs> well, what I mean is that some people don't think you can do clean comedy because it's just not funny. Mm. That's how the world thinks anyways. Yeah, yeah, And yet yeah. you're doing it in a way that is actually good, and you're doing it according to a biblical worldview. Yeah, I, I mean, one of the things that I've always thought was important uh, when I did comedy, because I'm, I'm more comfortable doing comedy in a, in a church just because I have more freedom there. Do, okay. do you know what I'm saying? Like, I can say things that I can't say in a comedy club, or you can say once. <laughs> that sounds exactly the opposite, I, right? I know, I know, right. but <laughs> but see, here's, here's the thing. Any stand-up comic has a, has a worldview. Right, that's my point, yes. Yeah, and I was, get, I was getting to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. But uh, so everything that you say comes from that point of view. Right. Um, and they're all used to a certain kind. So as soon as you come from a different one, a, a Christian worldview, um, it, it kind of, even though some of them think, oh, I'm breaking barriers, look at the stuff I'm saying. I'm, no, you're telling them exactly what they all believe anyway. That's so right. when I start saying stuff, they're like, that's a little, you know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. I think it's important. Well, what would you say about Okay, so put it this way. So some people would say, even a show like ours, they'll say, I don't like it because that's what the world does. Right? right? So they'll right. say, like, the yeah, world... Yeah. But, but my point is, is, well, the television's a neutral tool, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and, and comedy itself is a neutral tool. It can be used 
for the good or for the bad, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Yeah. And so, so they'll say, well, I don't think I should pursue entertainment or television or movies or those sorts of things because unbelievers do that. But my concern is that if we don't, as Christians, get involved in the entertainment industry, then it's only the unbelieving worldview people are hearing. Yeah. And so. Well, yeah, exactly. No, that's that's uh, it's absolutely true. And, and here's the thing. I mean, God created art. That's right. And so, if if we say, "Oh, I'm not going to do that because that's that's a worldly thing," well, it's not originally a worldly thing. I mean, I guess television, <laughs> the world made it, but uh, but it's it's storytelling, it's it's art, right? Right. Yeah. So, I, I absolutely, I think God wants us to use art to tell stories. To, uh, I mean, this is what he, He's created us to be creative. He's He's created us. That's right. So, yeah. What's What's the end game for you in pursuing this? What's What's your you, What's your heart's purpose and passion in all of this? Uh... I want to play Steve Anderson's church. <laughs> <laughs> Break down barriers, right? I want to get in there. Yeah, that's when you know you've made it. I just want Narnia as my background. That's all <laughs> I want. I want to be able to play. No, um, I, I want to keep doing I used to actually really struggle with this because I wanted some pretty, some, I had some lofty goals, uh, but they were, they were my goals. Do you know what I mean? Right. So I, I've come to a place of, of and, and not, not a perfect place. Sometimes I... I stray back into my own, oh, I want this. But, but I've come to a place where I'm, uh, I just want to, I want to glorify God with, with the gifts he's given me, whether that's stand-up, whether that's in this movie, or whatever. I'm, I'm trying to, you know, I like be you. useful to the kingdom. Yeah, I like you. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome. I'm a little intimidated because your chair's way higher than We did this on mine. purpose. Lately. It is, it's so intimidating. It's just, it's just yes, yeah, tell me. <laughs> um, and you're much taller than me too, well, right? So I have a short upper body. That's the problem. Yeah, short upper body. I'm all legs up here. I can see it on the monitor. Man. <laughs> praying, man. So, uh, so the the movie Extraordinary comes out September 7th, mm -hmm. and tell us one night only. One night only. Yes. And then it disappears forever. It's never to be seen again. <laughs> like most Christian films. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's another, that's another one of the, we checked all the boxes on this movie. <laughs> Kirk Cameron, it's never going to be around. Yeah, no, uh, it's, it's uh, Across America, Fathom event, uh, okay. September 7th. Uh, go and get your tickets because uh, uh, they're going fast. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know if that's true. Yeah. It's, uh, I, I've been... <laughs> this is the honesty sh episode. Hope, I don't right know say, if it's true. I no hope lying it's, on this episode. Hopefully right. they're going well. Yeah. So tell us about this clip. We have a clip of the film. Yeah. Tell us about it. Uh, I believe. Uh, you know what I did on purpose? Uh, I had the clips and I was sending them forward to the show, and then I didn't watch it so that I could say, oh, I don't know. I didn't uh, get a chance to watch the clip because yeah. that's what the big wigs do. Yeah. Now you're totally Hollywood. But, but, <laughs> yeah. but I just told everyone, so I guess that kind of defeats it. Uh, I believe this is the one with with Kirk Cameron and I. He's a, he's a DJ. DJ, but here's the thing. He's DJ Barry Armstrong, based on a true uh, Christian radio DJ, um, and that guy was way more excited that Kirk Cameron was. Oh, Kirk Cameron's playing me! And then meanwhile, David Horton, the the runner, is like, Yeah, Leland's playing me. <laughs> he was all disappointed. <laughs> I got legs. I got legs over here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, we're just we're just discussing the race and and what's what's coming up. All right, let's look at the clip. Tell us about the Trans Am race. How does it work? Well, each day is between 30 and 60 miles long. Um, all runners have to average 3.5 miles per hour each day, or we get disqualified. And the runner with the least amount of accumulated time at the end wins. Assuming, of course, you finish. I always finish what I start. Ooh, you heard it, folks. How many days does this insanity take? 64 days. 64 days. From one end of the country to the other. Yeah. Wow. Leave it up to Horton to do the impossible. So I think, I think that the only thing missing from that clip is the rapture in the middle. <laughs> so. well, it's, I then don't want to give it away, but it's, it's coming. <laughs> it's, then it's uh, truly Christian genre right, right, right there. All right, guys, be right back with Leland Kloss, and he's going to do some stand-up for us. <laughs> Tell us about the Trans Am race. How many days does this insanity take? 64 days. I feel like God wants me to inspire people one last time. Do you have any idea what you put us through every time you do one of these things? Your family, they seem like something to run to. What about marriage? What about fatherhood? 
I don't want to just start well with you. I want to finish well. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Leland Clausen. Thank you very much. Thank you. It is, uh, it is fantastic to be here. I was actually kind of worried that I wasn't going to be able to make it down uh, to the, the studio. Uh, two days ago, I, I was flying up and I was going through security, and all I forgot to do is stick my chapstick in a little Ziploc bag where you put your gels and your liquids. Just forgot to stick it in there, and security guard decided to make issue with it, right? He said, oh, it's actually a gel you're supposed to put in the bag. You didn't put it in the bag. <laughs> I was like, oh, I must have just forgotten. I'll take it now. And he's like, no, no, no. I need to confiscate it now because you didn't put it in the bag. <laughs> I'm like, dude, it's chapstick, you know? What do you do with chapstick? You know, take me somewhere! <laughs> <laughs> Granted, it did say lip balm on it. <laughs> lip balm, huh? It's a lip balm joke. Uh, you don't get that in a lot of the late night talk shows, just so you know. So it was pretty impressive. Um, if I do say so myself. Uh, I, here's the thing I, I talk a lot about at my shows, and uh, let me pose the question to you folks. Uh, and you just tell, just be honest. Um, so are my hands too big for my body? Is that too much, too much hand to body ratio? I hear this evolution argument, and I'm like, this is the evolution. I don't know what's going on. My, here's the latest thing I scared with my hands on the plane right up here. When I cough, I cover other people's mouths. And that's, <laughs> everybody's getting sick at that point. It's not, it's tough. I have, every time I shake somebody's hand, I tickle their armpit. And that's too much. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> I apologize, sir. That was, no, it's me. That's not you. It was tough growing up with hands as big. I didn't have the same finite motor skills that the kids had with their, their stubby little hands. You know, I could, couldn't do the things they could do. You know, at least, at least not as well as them, so I didn't, didn't like other things we, we, we did in school. You know, so, well, except for finger painting. I love finger painting. There we go. <laughs> I just finished seven projects. <laughs> and I'm out of paper. And paint, actually. I'm out of paint as well. You want to bring some over here? Yeah, no, I can help you. No problem. What's that? No, I have arms. I just don't need them. <laughs> I still finger paint, by the way. It's kind of a, kind of a hobby of mine now. I was doing some, uh, some finger painting last weekend there. I, uh, I painted the garage. <laughs> Let that dry. You see the, uh, you see the hand signs for the deaf? You see the, the sign language for the deaf there till they, uh, till they made me stop? I guess I was making the deaf people mad or something. <laughs> stop and it's too loud. It's too loud. That doesn't look right either. Hey, look how small my head is in proportion. Look at that. That's not a... I got a tiny head. It is the craziest body you've ever seen. Well, I'll give you a number so you get an idea. Uh, glove size, uh, 4XL. Um, hat size, youth medium. So that's embarrassing. <laughs> Seriously, but my gloves are big and tall. My hat's at Baby Gap. It's like, this is not cool. I got a terrible selection, by the way. I don't know. I, well, I, and by the way, I should, I should say this, too. Um, I, I tell real stories, real things, okay? But I will put little comedic twists on the end of things, right? You were talking about truth. The truth is, I put a little, little, little comedic license, we call it. So my real glove size is 4XL, absolutely true. But my real, uh, real hat size uh, is not actually youth medium. Uh, my real hat size uh, is actually youth small. Uh, <laughs> I had to change it because people weren't laughing as much. So just, just think about that for a second. That means my head is actually so small that it's not even funny anymore. That's what that means. <laughs> That's a small head. Here's how, by the way, this is how you know your head is too small for your hands. You shouldn't be able to touch both your ears with one hand at the same time. That's how you know. Yeah, that's, I love, I love watching people try. That's like my favorite thing. I got a half layer of my face. What's going on here? That means you're normal. <laughs> there was a guy a couple weeks, had a show a couple weeks ago. He's like, you can do it if you open your mouth. Why would you want to, right? I don't understand that. I don't know. The latest thing that happened, I was playing the, um, the Xbox 360 with my son there, uh, a little, a little uh, Nike Plus for Connect. It gives you your own personal 
workout. So um, it has a the connect, you know, it has a controller, but you also are the controller, right? I don't know what game this would be, but, <laughs> but I was doing Nike Plus with the connect. And here's the thing, if you're doing a workout video, you can kind of cheat on the video, right? Maybe not do the exercises well enough. Video doesn't know. But with the personal trainer, he's like, hey, get your knees up higher or whatever, right? In order for them to do it, they have to know what your body looks like. So you've got to stand in front of the Kinect camera while it's mapping out your body. And I was watching it on the screen as I was mapping out my body. It got up to my head, and I'm not making this up. There's a little red square around my head with this error message. And you know what the error message said? <laughs> Cannot detect head. <laughs> <laughs> Xbox has got jokes, OK? I turned around. My son was howling, right? He thought it was the funniest thing he'd ever seen. <laughs> He's literally bent over shaking. He's laughing so hard. I'm like, what are you laughing at? You look just like me, you freak. <laughs> laughing at yourself right now. That's what you're doing. I don't know. You know what's going to happen, too? A thousand years from now, some paleontologist is going to dig up my bones, right? He's going to be convinced he just found the missing link. Uh, I found the missing link. Missing link between, uh, oh boy, um, uh, birds and man. He's got a tiny little bird brain, but then he already had the arms of a man. But at the end of the arms, he still had massive wings attached. <laughs> that's, my, that's my Birdman flight. I had, a, I had a lady come up to me after a show one time. She was offended. I was doing jokes about the size of my hands. The very jokes you just heard, she was offended. And she said, and I quote, sets a bad example for kids about making fun of themselves. What do you even say to that? You know, I was like, um. Maybe comedy's not for you. It's not your thing. It's my own fault, though, because I, uh, I married her. <laughs> so that's, that's, me. that's me. You guys have been awesome. Thank you so much. I'm Leland Clausen. Good night. Leland! Thank you, brother. I appreciate you so much. Thank you, guys. All right, everybody. Thank you, guys. So that's it for this week on next week, guys. And we will catch you guys again next week. But before we go away today, I want to remind you all to go to endabortionnow.com. Since Apologia has started endabortionnow.com, we don't even know how many babies have literally been saved from death because of that ministry. It's the truth. Over 200 local churches across the United States of America are now engaged in bringing the gospel to their local abortion mills, serving and loving the mothers and fathers that are going in and saving lives. So it's an amazing thing. You guys can go to endabortionnow.com. You can get connected. You can write your local legislators. And you can get all the free training and free resources to join with the churches across the United States bringing the gospel to the abortion mills, offering love and support and help, and once and for all, ending abortion yes. in our nation. Yes. Thank you guys for joining us. We'll catch you guys next week. Yes. Yes.